Welcome to Kinetic Groups. So let's dive right in. So this past weekend, we launched a series inside of a series, as we're doing throughout uh, this entire series called How Do You Know? And we started talking about finances, but as we introduced this series, what we discovered is whenever we talk about finances or look at finances in Scripture, what we're really dealing with is the issue of our heart, because finances are always a heart issue. And so I want to read the passage that I taught from this past weekend and then do a quick recap and then just kind of bring home one thought that I want us to think about, meditate on, and then in your groups you're going to discuss this past weekend's message. And so what we looked at is this passage of Scripture. Jesus said this, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is a lamp of the body, so if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness? No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. So the four points that we looked at, and I'm not going to, obviously I'm not going to reteach the whole message, but I just want to highlight them, is the four points we looked at. Here's the first one. Your heart follows your treasure. Now, so often we think, and we would hope it would be the other way around, that whatever we start to love, automatically our treasure will follow it. But that's not always the case. And what Jesus was saying was the flip of that is that your heart will always follow wherever you invest your resources, specifically your treasures, and in our culture, specifically your money. Now, there are other things that are valuable to us and how we invest them matters. But Jesus, in this context, was talking about our finances. And so he said, your heart will follow after your treasure. Here's a second point, and I think a very deep point that I hope registered with you is that every expenditure of our treasure or resources is an investment of the heart into the kingdom of God or this world. You see, what we looked at is that our heart is not simply uh, just a, a simple part of who we are. Our heart represents many things. Our heart represents our identity. It represents uh, our security. It represents all the goals that we have for life. It represents how we experience pleasure. I mean, it, there's so much to our hearts. It becomes the foundational part of our character and our nature and who we are. And Jesus says every time we spend, so we have an expenditure of our resources, specifically our money, we're investing our heart into either the earth or into the kingdom of God, into heaven. Now, I, just that thought, I hope it registered with you because as I was studying it, and I believe the Holy Spirit revealed that to me, it challenged me immediately to think that way. Is, is every expenditure in the earth bad? It's not. But when we continually put the earth as our priority, the, the ways of our culture, the kingdom of this earth, what we're doing is investing all of our hopes and dreams and our, our who we are, our security, our identity, we're investing it into something that is, one, temporary, and two, unable to withstand the storms of life. And so Jesus challenged us. So first point was our hearts follow treasure. Then we looked at that every expenditure was investing either in this world or in heaven. And then we looked at what we focus on will determine the health of our life. So if we are focused on the earth, then our lives are going to reflect that. But if we focus on heaven and the kingdom of God, our lives are going to reflect it, and it's going to determine whether or not we're healthy. And then lastly, the last point we looked at is you will be a servant. All of us are going to serve someone. I mean, there's a famous Bob Dylan song that says that you, everybody's going to serve someone. But what we looked at is what Jesus said. We're either going to serve God or we're going to serve money. And as we looked at really the idea of mammon. Now, why is this important? Is because all of our lives, we are making choices with our lives, making an investment toward the future. And the challenge we have when we look at our resources is, are we going to make an investment in the kingdom of God, or are we going to make an investment in this world? And the reason this matters is only one of those groups has the power to truly bring us what our hearts ultimately desire. See, our culture can't. Our culture is looking to take from us and to exploit us God is looking to give to us. God is the only one who truly loves us, proven that to us by dying on the cross for our sins. And he is the one who wants to give us the full life that we were designed to live out. So if we are making constant investments in this earth, we are taking our heart away from God 
and giving it into something that's ultimately going to let us down. And this is why Jesus said this. You see, this message, let's just be honest, this message is oftentimes lost in the translation because people disqualify it because pastors preach it. Uh, what I mean by that is people have kind of a, at their core a distrust of pastors uh, or anyone that wants their monies. And, and unfortunately, in the church world, churches have gotten a negative reputation for caring about money and, or maybe only caring about money. But the truth is, the person who said this message, when we looked at it word for word, quoting them, was Jesus, the Son of God, the one who didn't need our money, the one who spoke the world into existence, absolutely had no need of our money. But he was speaking this truth because this is what he was trying to get all of us to understand. He wants to bear the burden of the responsibility to give us provision. He wants to hold on to that. He wants us to cast all that responsibility on him so that he can provide for us so that we will learn to trust him. And so he's asking us and challenging us to give our resources, investing it into what he's doing here on the earth. Now, here's the truth that we have to embrace. We just have to understand this. There is no way, zero way, to fully give your heart to Jesus without giving your resources. This is what this passage means. Your heart follows your treasure. So if these two are connected to each other, there is zero way, impossible, to give your heart fully to God unless you give your treasure. And so this is what Jesus is challenging us to. So as you discuss this in your group, what you're going to look at is, are you giving your full heart to God? And if not, why not? And I pray that through the encouragement of your group, the challenge of each other, that as a church, we will step out in faith to embrace this, what I would say is difficult to live out in our culture, but one of the most powerful and profound truths that if we live it out, we will discover a deeper relation of God than we could ever imagine. I love you, proud of you, and praying for you. See you at one of our weekend services.